Hi, I'm Christopher Hine, and today we're gonna to be talking about takedowns in Aikido. So I've made several Conran videos uh, talking about the Udeose. Uh, I think there are two Udeose, which is the, the arm takedown, is what that means. Uh, videos that are up on YouTube, and there's several more on my Patreon page, and I kind of talk about uh, what the spectrum of the takedown looks like. So from getting the position, from getting to the position for the takedown, and then how the position works out, and then if the position gets turned over, how that works out as well, right? So, so looking at all those different possibilities in that. Um, so today I actually wanna talk about percentage of takedown ability, right? So how high percentage is a takedown versus the kinds of contexts we're talking about in Aikido and how that kind of varies. We're not gonna do any sparring in this video today, so sorry, but uh, I didn't wanna set up all that right now. I'm just gonna give you some, some things to think about when you're looking at takedowns in Aikido and, and how that works out. So I'm gonna call Josh over here, we're gonna go to work. Josh? All right, so let's talk about takedowns. What I'm gonna give you right now is, it's just thought experiments for you. So it, it's a way to think about what's going on here. And, and when we start to talk about takedowns, a very valid question to ask is, how high percentage is that? Is that a high percentage technique? And this is something that's been really commonly used for a while now in martial arts where uh, I, I'm asking, how likely is it that I'm gonna pull that off? So, so sure, you can construct any kind of crazy takedown you want, um, and it might even work once uh, in, in a thousand times tried, but that would be what we consider a low percentage technique. Then there are techniques that we will see often. We'll see those techniques all the time. And so if you go look at a judo competition or a Greco-Roman competition or Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition, there are throws that you will see over and over and over that day. And those are what we call high percentage takedowns. So those are takedowns that are done uh, often because they're, they're really good, okay? Now we're gonna talk about when we look at the Ikkyo takedown, uh, a lot of times, so, so we've seen a lot of, uh, of questions coming up on this channel recently of, um, well, how likely is it that you would even get an Ikkyo takedown? And I think that's a very valid question. And I, I kind of want to present a way to look at it for you to kind of start to think about it. I'm not going to try to justify um, uh, that Aikido is a high percentage takedown because I personally don't think it's a high percentage takedown. But I'm going to show you why it probably exists and why we need to think about it. Okay, so first we need to go, we need to ask, what are high percentage takedowns? Okay, so I think we could definitely make the argument that a double leg takedown is a high percentage takedown. Okay, so you could go to wrestling tournaments, you'll see it all the time. Um, you'll see it in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, all kinds of places, you'll see it a lot. Um, or a single leg, so some variation of a leg tackling technique, right? So some kind of technique that goes down here low and drives into this guy and knocks him off balance. That's a high percentage technique. Now it's high percentage because I've bound up his legs in some way, either one or both of them, and I'm driving my entire body weight into him and knocking him back. So even if this guy's a big guy, if I have a good single or double leg, I can probably still take him down. So even for a, a pretty good size advantage, if I have a good uh, takedown like that, I can probably get this guy. So leg tackling takedowns are high percentage takedowns. Okay some kind of body controlling takedown, right? Now that can either be like a big judo hip toss or it could be like a Greco-Roman souple or something like that, right? So, so any one of these kind of techniques and uh, uh, any one of these, these forms of techniques are, are going to be a high percentage technique and we're gonna see that. We can see it from the front or the back or the side. We're gonna see these a lot. So if we went to a, a wrestling tournament or a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament, Jiu-Jitsu tournament, you can see those a lot. Those are super high percentage. How likely is it that I'm gonna take a guy down with this, okay? Now, in a context where this guy is, is trying to stop me from taking him down, and I've got him and I wanna take him down, probably not very high percentage. Why is that not high percentage? Well, one, because I only have control of his arm. So if we look at why the double leg takedown's good, it's good because I'm controlling both of his legs, which is what he's gonna balance himself with, or even one of his legs, and he's gonna balance himself with those. So if he doesn't have those, he can balance himself. Let's look at the high percentage body control takedown, right? Well, I'm able to pick up his entire body with this, and by doing that, he won't have legs to support him. So that's a high percentage throw or takedown as well. But when I'm looking at this, I'm not really controlling his legs. Now, sure, I could trip or something, but that would be a different technique than just taking him down with his arms. Um, and, and we could say that's a variation. We'd come around to that. But, but this is not going to be very high percentage. And so this is why you don't see it in judo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournaments. It's not high percentage. Okay, so in that context, why don't you see Ikkyo takedowns in 
in regular grappling situations like tournaments or even go to a gym where they're sparring regularly, you won't see them because it's not high percentage. Now let's see why it might exist in Aikido. Now if this guy has a knife in his hand or any kind of weapon, a club or whatever you want to say, a gun, whatever it is, right? Okay, now if I do a double leg takedown on this guy, the second I've come down here, I am completely exposed to that knife, right? So I can't stop that knife from coming in, right? Now, of course, I could come up here. Maybe I could get a single leg off of this. But still, in order to get to that position, I endanger myself by shooting everything down in here and, and I'm taking a good chance of getting cut. Further, even once I get the takedown, unless I've somehow secured that hand, I'm not going to be able to take him down. Now, you can say, of course, well, then you would just shoot a double leg and grab the wrist. It's really hard to grab the wrist out of the air. So if you've never tried that, you should try grabbing the wrist out of the air, meaning that while I'm dedicated down here and I see that knife and I go like this, it's gonna be real hard for me to get that hand, right? So it's gonna be hard for me to get it. Not impossible, but this maybe isn't the best way to go at trying to take someone down who's got something in their hand or could potentially have something in their hand. Okay, now, what about an upper body hold? Now, if I got the upper body hold in, like say I got a waist lock, right? Of course we can see this is not a great idea because he's easily able here to stab. I could though cinch over the top or grab the hand to get that upper body hold. Now we might see a throw similar to this in judo because judo comes from old style jujitsu, which is the same uh, lineage as Aikido comes from, this old school, and you'll see this arm controlling. Now, the problem with this is, even when I come in here like this, he still has a good chance of getting that knife hand free, right? If he pulls this directly away from me, now I've got to come in here and get it. Now, if, if when he pulls that hand away, he puts this hand against my chest, now I'm in a really horrible position. So this kind of movement, which could work to keep him from stabbing me, can be kind of dangerous, right? So because there's a lot of bad things that can happen there. Now, of course, if we look at the percentages, that won't always happen. Sometimes I will throw them down. I have taken people down with a knife in their hand this way before, so totally a doable thing. You can totally do it. But it, it's probably going to be kind of dangerous. So would I throw them? Yes. Would I probably get stabbed for it? Probably yes, right? So both of our common unarmed takedown techniques are not gonna be all that great in an armed situation. Okay, now let's look at if we were doing this technique and we'll, we'll talk about why it's bad and we'll talk about why it's good. Now, if we're in this kind of position, you can see my whole body's away from him. Now, let's say he switched hands because that's an option he has. Now, notice I still have the entirety of his body holding him away from me. So if he reaches in there for stabbing, you can see it's really difficult for him to get that. And in fact, the more he reaches, so I'll just let him reach in right now. Okay, so he's just re go, good reach in. Okay, look, see how he's nicely reaching in to stab? Now, the second he nicely reaches in to stab and I extend into that arm, he goes off balance because the act of turning this half of his body in, which is what he doesn't want to do right now because he knows he's going to go off balance, okay, that act is what makes it possible to do that ikkyo. So him switching and trying to stab me from the other side is actually what makes that possible. Now it's dangerous because there's a knife. I don't, I don't, I, I never in my brain think that guy's got a knife and I want to go get him, right? And so this is part of the big difference of why Aikido is different than other martial arts. But understand that from this position, what's a from this position, what's possible is he can switch hands. He can totally switch hands. And I still haven't lost that much of my ability to deal with him. And this also extends into not taking him down, but just going, whoa, I need to get out of there, which is what Aikido is really all about. So understand when we're kind of talking about this stuff, we're also talking about the difference between traditional jujitsu and uh, modern jujitsu, right? Okay. Now, let's say he doesn't uh, switch, and there's all kinds of ways in Aikido we have to keep, to make it very difficult for him to switch, so all kinds of little ways, but let's say right now he's just not switching. Okay, now, when I start to take him down, I am constantly keeping that knife away from me, which is good. So that makes it a really good type of takedown for this situation. So it is a lower percentage takedown overall. If we are looking at getting the takedown, then it's going to be lower percentage. But for the, the situation of a knife, it's the only kind of situation where you're going to get them down. Now, udeose, which just means an arm takedown, is one of a variation of things. This could also become a rokyo. So if taking them down is the number one objective, then a rokyo will become higher percentage than an ikkyo. I could also do something like variations of Russian two-on-ones or all kinds of things that you will find in other unarmed martial arts. So, so those kinds of things will appear. But the reason you won't see the regular high percentage takedowns in Aikido is because we're always accounting for a weapon. 
And so that means we're going to relegate ourselves to a slightly lower percentage set of techniques that allows us to take care of ourselves. Now, when we start to transition this from uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, which is essentially what we're seeing now is kind of the ideas in Japanese Jiu Jitsu to Aikido, we'll see a whole different set. In, the, in Aikido, I don't even want to get this guy. I want to get away from this guy always. So if I have him in this percentage and or in this position and he's at all difficult to take down, I will either shove him away from me if I'm stronger than him or move behind him if he's stronger than me. Those are my goals, right? So that's Aikido and what Aikido is doing. Aikido takedowns only happen when he's already inherently off balance, right? And so that doesn't mean that I have magical powers and the second I touch him, he's off balance. It means that in the struggle of him trying to get me, he found himself off balance and he was, he was falling down, right? So I hope that kind of helps frame this stuff for you a little bit better. The techniques, the takedowns we have in Aikido are not super high percentage takedowns. But the high percentage takedowns that you would use would be deadly if their hands were both free. Now there's a slightly lower percentage set of takedowns that you can use that control the hand and it does a good job of that, right? So, and those could be something, you know, from a Russian two on one or something like that from wrestling, which, which could be a, a good high percentage technique. There, there are some problems with that too, but, but could be a better higher percentage technique. Um, but that's only when there's a weapon being accounted for, right? So that's what we're doing with the weapon is we're accounting for the weapon in that way. Um, and then when we're actually looking at Aikido, we're only ever looking at, at Aikido takedowns when either A, I'm way bigger than them and I could do any takedown I want because I'm just significantly larger than they are, but the takedowns I choose in Aikido, like this Ikkyo takedown, is a good takedown to protect me and him and anyone around us when I take him down. So it's a better takedown for that kind of situation or a situation where he just happened to be so off balance that I could take him down with that and that was safe for me. Otherwise, we're always trying to get out of there and make distance. So these are just some things to think about when you're looking at Aikido and takedowns. I hope this helps. I'm Christopher Hines, this is Joshua Teehee, Maya Solana McDaniels behind the camera. Thanks a lot.